Oh, Mitchell Palmer. Let me start that again. Mitchell T. Palmer. You know my name, damn it. Even if I don't. Uh, today on Beyond Barbering, we're back to Beyond Barbering. Today's episode of Beyond Barbering brought to you by, well, me. I'm here in the executive room library at Gentleman Barber, and I'm coming to you today to talk about a couple of things. Uh, the first of them is, last night, the wife and I, we were watching, and literally here, look, I'll tell you what, why don't we just get rid of, get rid of the name, so, tuck that away. Last night, we found a new uh, comedy special on Netflix by Jim Gaffigan. I can't remember what it's called. It's, it's not, not important. It's brand new. Uh, it's brand new. I know that it's brand new because he was talking about COVID. He was talking about what a shitty year 2021 has been. Um, you know, as comics do... As they get more famous and more popular and more moolah, they start talking about uh, real things um, that they want us to bring some give a shit to. <laughs> so, so uh, yesterday, last night, my boy Jim Gaffigan started talking in his special as we watched it about Jeff Bezos. He started off real cute, like, by saying how we have these billionaire astronauts. And did anybody ever expect to see this coming? I think at some point he said, you know, and there's more than two. So, then he went on to talk about how they spend all these millions to go to space. While school teachers don't have money for school supplies. And it brought up for me a couple of concepts. And the first of them is I looked to see what Jim Gaffigan's net worth was. So while he's complaining, bitching and moaning about billionaires building rockets, which by the way creates jobs. For all the people, all the scientists, all the engineers, all the laborers that work to pay taxes to build the rockets that Jeff Bezos uses to go to space. And he talks about, I think the catchphrase he used was, so you're building a rocket to go to space. Why are you doing that? And he said, one of the billionaires said, well, I'm doing this now so that in the future you can go to space. And Gaffigan's reply was, of course, well, I don't want to go to space. Well, neither do I. I don't want to go to space. But I do, in this era of COVID-19 pandemic, 19, mind you, we're coming up on the year 2022 now. And he does talk at some length about how 2021 was no better than 2020 uh, because the pandemic continues to persist. A man proceeds to complain that billionaires are building rockets to go to space while sitting on what I, you know, loosely Googled. I mean, you know, the Internet has some accuracy. The Internet has some vagaries and the Internet has some bullshit. My stunning discovery while doing a very vague, (laughs) very shallow research i found place online that professes or purports to claim that jim gaffigan has a net worth of right around 30 million dollars so here we have a multi-millionaire who tells jokes and acts in i mean what i would have to describe as really poor movies for a living complaining about a billionaire who is building rockets to go into space whether 
Jim Gaffigan or Mitchell T. Palmer wants to go to space with him at some point in the future. Uh, I submit to you that then, adding to it uh, the denial by not even mentioning the probably hundreds, if not more, jobs that a guy like Jeff Bezos created to build the beastly rockets that Jim Gaffigan wants to compa complain about. At the expense of public school teachers who don't have supplies to teach the future generations of America. Well, perhaps in Beyond Barbering down the road, we will have a discussion a little bit more about whether or not I particularly want the school teachers of America in this day and age to teach the children of America anything because of the way they're teaching, because of the indoctrination that it has become, because of the flaming uh, side of things where people who are in positions to teach the children of America can't keep their ravenous and rabid points of view out of teaching school. So, here you have Jim Gaffigan, a multi-millionaire actor and comedian, criticizing a multi-millionaire creator of how many thousands of jobs do you think Jeff Bezos? In Justice Space program, let alone Amazon, might have been responsible for creating, putting people back to work in an era in COVID-19 pandemic era, in an era where people don't really want to go back to work. So, my questions are these. Is it hypocritical for a multimillionaire comedian actor to criticize a billionaire astronaut for creating rockets to go into space at the expense of school teachers having supplies to teach while sitting on a $30 million, roughly, net worth. And second, do Jim Gaffigan's children go to public schools? Now, I don't know. I haven't looked. I don't intend to look. I don't really care. But I'm dubious to think that his children attend public schools. So, the way our schools are funded is through a government a government that can't balance its checkbook, a government that can't understand that a national debt in excess of $30 trillion is not a healthy approach to economics. And what Jim Gaffigan, I guess, is suggesting is that he would prefer these billionaire astronauts not create hundreds, if not thousands, of jobs to build their rockets and instead give money to school teachers that Jim Gaffigan's kids won't learn from because as a multimillionaire himself, his children probably go to a private school where they learn at what I'd like to think is a higher quality than the public school system. I mean, how many of you have heard or even used the phrase? So you're blaming the public school system, huh? Public school system let you down, did it? Cool story, as the kiddies say, or once did. So maybe they don't anymore. Point number two for me tonight kind of jumps off of this, and that is that in darkness it is easy to bamboozle, befuddle, and bullshit people. In the darkness of Jim Gaffigan's example, and I know he does it partly for comic purposes. But I think we all know and understand that he does it partly for an agenda, whatever agenda that is. I believe it's a more liberal agenda coming from this man. But from darkness, it's easy to lead people. Lead people around by the nose. Tell them to stay home. I guess shame multi-millionaires or billionaires from creating hundreds if not thousands of jobs on a space program. <clears throat> during an era of time where the country's spending money like it's going out of style, 
people are losing jobs like they're going out of style and those who have decided long ago not to return to their jobs well that's going out of style too I submit to you however that the country and the state that it's in in this area of darkness is faced with opportunity and it's a matter of whether or not you and I and people like us will take this opportunity you see and this is not my concept it's not a new concept but it is a worthwhile concept I've heard throughout the bulk of my life that when a challenge comes your way you should embrace that challenge it's an opportunity to learn to grow well, I've always thought that was kind of bullshit. And it always actually kind of pissed me off. But I've recently discovered a, a different analogy, if you will, wherein when everything's well lit and illuminated by the light of day or perhaps by artificial light, it's easy to see what right from wrong is. In lightness, there's very little to learn. You can only observe what is already illuminated. In darkness is where true opportunity lies. In darkness is where true opportunity for growth, for advancement, for expansion in your life comes. And this has all been sparked by some opportunities I've had in darkness over the last 24 to 36 hours. Now, life is full of opportunities like these. Life is full of lights off, darkness, groping in the groping nature of man to pursue something of value, to pursue something of worth, to pursue something that, when achieved in the darkness, becomes something bigger and greater than I could possibly achieve in the illumination of day or artificial light. Something already enlightened to me has very little to teach me. I can continue to pursue it. I can continue to expand on it. But in darkness, where I have to find my own answers, where I have to come up with my own concepts to combat this narrative that billionaires are evil and where especially Hollywood and the entertainment industry likes to talk to middle income Americans like you and I and tell us how billionaires are greedy evil bastards while with their multi-millions they have a better solution it's just that they don't want to be any part of it they don't want to bring their children out of their private schools, out of their safe environments where they have the ability to spend a little bit more of that multi-millions to get their children the kind of education they want. But they want to complain that people with more millions than they have should do more to make the country a better place by funding something that I'm going to submit to you for your consideration is a failed experiment and that is the public school education system in America. You see we've given the checkbook for the public school system to the very people that can't understand operating in the red year after year after year adding to the national debt year after year after year while encouraging people not to work while encouraging people to take more handouts from the very government that can't manage its own checking account isn't the answer or the way forward. That's what I have to submit to you. And I also would like to share with you something that I found profound in my inbox yesterday, the day that I discovered the unfortunate recent incident here at Gentleman Barber. And it is this quote by Alfred Adler and it's right in front of you but I'm going to read it anyway the chief danger in life is that you may take too many precautions 
I submit to you that maybe we're taking too many precautions in a lot of different ways. Maybe we're operating too much in the light of things we already know while being led around in the darkness by people who know how to use darkness to steer us the direction they want us to go. Maybe multi-millionaires are telling us that the billionaires are the problem. While the multi-millionaires lead a lifestyle that we can't even conceive of. We're just wallowing down here in the mud of everyday average Joe. Hypocrisy is a form of gray area to me. And America, in my opinion, has been living far too much in that gray area where we're neither in light nor in darkness. We're neither dealing with a challenge that can teach us something, nor are we dwelling in the success of the lightness we have created. Instead, we are sitting by and we are letting multimillionaires tell us how to live our lives, while they also tell billionaires how to live theirs. Perhaps it's time for us to take this advice. Now, I've read a little bit about Alfred Adler. Don't claim to be a proponent of him or his style. You can read about Alfred, Alfred Adler if you'd like. But perhaps we are taking too many precautions in life in general. For those of you that want to read too much into that about COVID and the precautions that we've been ordered to take, not offered as solutions, but ordered to take. Ought to think. Is that operating in lightness? Where everything's clear, clear as a bell? Or is that operating in darkness? Where somebody else gets to make the rules? Once again, God bless you. God bless the United States of America. Still the greatest country that ever existed. And be good. Or don't get caught.